And I want to welcome everyone to an event that comes around just once in every 50 years, unless it's the assistant director, Rick Marais, 50th birthday, which happens to come around every couple of years, over and over again. Um, what an incredible gathering. We have so many elegant people and luminaries with us tonight. Uh, our board of trustees is with us. I can't take the time to thank and name all of the people who are part of this. At this very moment, we have 20 CPA volunteers working hard to make this evening appear effortless. Uh, at the moment, they're turning away people at the uh, check-in desks. Thanks so much to our volunteers. And I want to especially thank um, in the incredible women that created this event. Um, Chris Wasserbach, the indomitable, uh, amazing Chris Wasserbach. I hope she's here. She's probably working. Ah, but Jack will tell her. Uh, and the incredible Jeannie Marino. Where's Jeannie? She is such a bundle of energy and dynamite that every time she goes in the checkpoint of an airport, they let her bags go through. They'll even let the clothes she's wearing go through, but she cannot go through. That's how spicy she is. Jeannie Marino played a huge part in this. And I also want to thank um, Rachel Short for incredibly uh, organizing uh, wines and delicious uh, delicacies with so many um, vendors and stores here in Carmel. And, and I definitely want to thank my lovely and talented wife, too, Patrice Taylor. Ah, thank you all. There are so many others I could thank, uh, but we'll, we'll press on because I want to get out of the way, again, for a lesson in the history of photography by those people who lived it. We have an Adams, a Weston, and a Bullock with us this evening. Um, uh, and most importantly, I thank all of you for being here, uh, rooting for us uh, on this wonderful um, anniversary. Uh, CPA and other nonprofits wouldn't last this long without the faith of our community. Uh, and every historic gathering deserves a historic group of people who can tell us about our history. So we have with us tonight um, the son of Ansel Adams, who as a young boy actually was in the truck when his dad so looked out his passenger window uh, you won't have to tell this story, Michael. I love telling it, though. When you were a young boy, so lucky to travel with your dad, your dad looked to the east, saw a moon rising, pulled the car off the road, jumped on the roof of his car, took a picture called Moonrise Over... Ah, very good, very good. Can you believe Michael was with his dad on that? And... Uh, you know, we have the progeny of Ansel Adams, Wynne Bullock, and uh, Cole Wesson with us tonight. And I always get the word progeny confused with prodigy, but both of those words are applicable, applicable because we have the talented offsprings of, the, of three of the great people that founded that venerable room 50 years ago in 1967. Um, each one of them is accomplished in their own right. Michael retired as a general as a physician and as director of aerospace medicine, so roughly, yeah, we have we have the son of Cole Weston with us tonight, who is a world-renowned photographer in his own right and a super popular workshop teacher. Just back, check out the tan of of him and his family just back from a workshop in the desert. Kim Weston is with us, and his dad Cole played a huge role when he was director of Sunset Center. I, I don't want to steal your lines, but uh, yeah, oh no. <laughs> and we have the very gracious and very lucky Lynn Harrington Bullock, uh, one of Wynn's beautiful daughters, uh, sharing a few words about her dad tonight. And many of you know her sister, Barbara, who also dearly wanted to be here, but somebody, one of the two of them, had to give a lecture on their dad's enormous exhibition merely at the Center for Photo... Oh, no. The, <laughs> that's us. We're the Center for Photographic Art. Barbara, at this moment, is speaking about her dad's uh, uh, international exhibition at the, the Center for Creative Photography. Center for Creative Photography in Tucson. 
where your grandfather's negatives are collected and Ansel's. Um, but if you miss seeing Barbara, you can see her bare little bottom uh, in a photograph indoors. So with that, uh, I thank all of you for being here and all of the people who are making it happen. And uh, please join me in welcoming the history of photography. We'll start with Ansel's son, Michael. <coughs> Brian, thank you very much. And you only said I had to speak for three minutes. <laughs> I had to go and Google the Friends of Photography to get dates. And I want to just pass on a few things that I remember also. And I remember the people. January 1st, 1967. Ansel, Virginia usually had a New Year's Day party at their house down in the Highland. And on that day, 67, Ansel, Virginia, Beaumont and Nancy Newhall, Morley Bear, Edgar Bizance, Art Connell, Lillian Dacott, Rosario Maceo, Jerry Sharp, Brett Weston, and Gerald Robinson were the people in attendance that got together and talked about creating the Center for Creative, I mean, Center. <laughs> Friends of Photography. Uh, and, and they did something, I think, that day that was very important. They, they wanted to, to develop a, a, a program that was uh, photographers, but not just the locals. They wanted to make it national and international, and I think they were able to accomplish that. Interestingly, over the next few years, uh, it, it really grew, and, and Kim will talk about Cole's experience. Uh, they went to Cole really for the space. Uh, Kim can tell us more about that. But they got started here. I remember visiting, we came to a number of their programs. And the things that I remember from the, the friends, the most important to me, were the publications. And I, I wanted to comment on what they accomplished. Um, they had something like 330 uh, scheduled uh, exhibits in their years here and in later in San Francisco, which is pretty impressive. Uh, the first exhibition was in 67, and they had, it was at the Sunset Cultural Center, which I assume is, we're talking this place, but the people that exhibited on that uh, occasion were Ansel, Gwen Bullock, Imogen Cunningham, Dorothy uh, Lang, Brett Weston, and Minor White. They started, they started uh, the workshop programs that have went on for years. They went through a number of, of directors over the years. But the one thing that stands out to me was the uh, production of the Untitled series. There were 58 books, 58 in this series, and they were really high quality, you know, programs, uh, presentations of the current photography, all pretty much all black and white, as I remember. But these are things that I remember that the center was really important with, important for, and uh, was responsible for. A couple of things uh, personal. Uh, Ansel, Virginia, and my sister and I owned the house down in the Carmel Highlands. And Ansel's goal was to give the house, donate the house, to the Friends of Photography, which we did, the four of us. Well, that's wonderful. Virginia had life tenancy after Ansel uh, died. Uh, there was no intent at that time to move. In fact, some of you may remember that they developed a center which was going to be built on land just across the road from Point Lobos. In fact, they had a, uh, a program of uh, people uh, giving or presenting architectural drawings and even models of what they were going to actually build there. And I can remember seeing a model of this structure that was going to house the Friends of Photography in that location. Well, that didn't occur. Ansel died, and within four years, they were in San Francisco. 
A couple of years after uh, they moved to San Francisco, I was told there was nobody that knew, had ever met Ansel. So the, the people involved were very, very different. I can tell you the best thing that happened from that move is that Jeannie and I bought the house. So it came back into the family and we live there now. Now, I don't want to say anything more. I'm not sure what to say, but I'm here to answer questions. If anybody's got some questions about the friends that I might be able to answer, I'm happy to be here. Otherwise, I'm going to turn this over to Kim. Okay. Let's hear from Kim Weston, who has good photographic genes, too. And also shorter than Ansel. I always love it. In our house, we have a picture of Ansel and uh, Edward together out on our deck. And um, Ansel, of course, good six feet. My grandfather was five, five. And Ansel is sort of leaning over. So he's not towering over the top of, <coughs> of Edward. And I, I love the connection that there was between the two families. Um, but to get back to, to this school, and uh, actually brings back a lot of memories for me because I went to school here. Uh, my homeroom was right over there. Um, we were the last graduating class out of Sunset School. Uh, my father was the first graduating class in 1927 out of this school. Uh, so there's a long history of this school. And dad was the first uh, creative director when the school became uh, no more. We were all shipped off to middle school. Um, it became a cultural center for Carmel. And dad um, was the first director. And as, as Michael said, there were all these rooms. They were all classrooms and they needed to be filled and, and used in certain ways. And so my father you know, knew that Nassau and this group was getting together and wanted a place for the Friends of Photography. And dad said, hey, we have the room. And that's where it all started, uh, which to me is, is pretty amazing to, to have that lineage of, of history and family all put into this one place. Um, didn't talk to dad too much about the friends. I mean, the friends, I remember coming to shows here, uh, watching my uncle Brett's show here. Um, you know, it was a place for artists to come and show their work. And I think it was so important in this community of great artists great photographers. And if you read the original um, idea of the Friends, it was not just photography. It was writers, it was sculptors, it was poets. It was, it was a whole group of people, uh, a community of artists that were supposed to come together. Um, but now it's, it's basically just photography, which is great. And, but I think what enriches our community and what Brian has done uh, is carry on the tradition of photography. Um, I look around the group here. I'd love to see a lot more younger people. I mean, the youngest person here is probably my son. <clears throat> and these things don't, they don't, evolve unless there are young people. Young people are the future. Young people are what brings everything up to the next grade. Um, so what I would love to see much more is this activity of younger people. Because, you know, well, I'm old, you know? How much energy do I have? But <clears throat> watching my son and his girlfriend um, run our nonprofit, and get the energy going again with the younger people to me is, is very, very important. And this school, I mean, I played here when I was a kid. My father played here when he was a kid. Uh, is very, very special. And uh, 
Thank you. And, uh, brother, brother Kim, you're so modest and gentlemanly not to just tell the world what your family does for young people with your Weston scholarship, you know, promoting continuing darkroom photography, analog photography among young people. And I was here with a crowd this size when Kim and Gina stood on those steps and gave out awards to the lucky young high school and uh, college students who won the, who, who strove so diligently all year to win a Weston, a Weston, they call it. Yeah, so thank you, Kim, for what you do for, and Gina, and Zach. Let's, let's, let's round out this triumvirate of incredible founders of the Friends of Photography with Lynn Harrington Bullock. Hello. Hello, everyone. And thank you for coming here. Friends of Photography was a very important organization for my father. He was in on it at the very beginning. Uh, he was the exhibition chair till, I think, almost until his death. Um, for him, it was not only a place to exhibit established photographers, but to allow the opportunity for young photographers to show their work. And he encouraged innovative ways to take photos. Um, when he passed away, the, the board got together and they honored him by naming the gallery after my father. And that was very special. Um, I'm not a photographer myself, <laughs> but photography has influenced my life in many, many ways. Um, when my father passed away, my mother took up the camera and we also came and volunteered at the Friends we spent many hours stuffing envelopes for mailings. And I was a model for my father, not only my sister, but as I think as soon as I was born, dad was taking pictures of me. Not only family shots, but art photography until I was about six years old. And it was a natural thing to do. It was just a part of my life and normal. And I've met incredible people, incredible photographers throughout the years. And mainly it was because of Friends of Photography. And thank you very much for continuing the tradition. It's, it's beginning to feel again like the Friends of Photography. And thank you all. <laughs> um, if you have any questions that you might want to ask me, I'd be happy to try and respond to them. <laughs> okay. Yep. Thanks so much um, for bringing the Bullock family here. <laughs> thank you. For you. That was a must. Can you imagine? Can you imagine a higher compliment for any photographer in the world than Wynn Bullock uh, to have his name selected by the likes of mm, Ansel Adams, Brett Weston, Cole Weston, Beaumont Newhall, you know, on and on and on. You know, uh, even Ansel said, not my name, Wynn Bullock's name should be the name honoring this gallery. Unbelievable compliment. Good one. <laughs> Well, dear friends of photography, we raise a toast to all of you. How about a, another 50 years for all of you? Thanks for being here. Enjoy the evening. Thank you.